Hi everyone, and welcome to this plant tutorial bite for oxygen not included. As always, make sure to check out the plant tutorial bite if you haven't already for an overview of the plant mechanics. In this video, we're looking at sleet wheat, which is a more late game plant that is tricky to grow, but well worth it for high quality foods. As you may guess from their name, sleet wheat plants are naturally found in frozen biomes around the map in their cold temperature range. And it's this temperature range which makes them a bit tricky to grow. Specifically, their livable temperature range is between minus 55 and plus 5 degrees Celsius. Domestic sleet wheat though requires 5 kilograms per cycle of dirt and 20 kilograms per cycle of water, which will freeze in most of this temperature range. That means setting them up requires a bit of care, and I'll look at that shortly. Sleet wheat plants are small at only one tile high, and are the only one tile high farming plant. They also have a decor of plus 15 at a two tile range. In terms of atmosphere, they must be in oxygen, polluted oxygen or carbon dioxide between 150 grams and 10 kilograms, so you can farm them without suits, although the dupes will get a little cold. Before looking at how to farm them though, I'm going to run through why you would want to, and there are very good reasons. Sleet wheat plants make sleet wheat grain when harvested which is both a cooking ingredient and the plant seed. Domestically, they take 18 cycles to grow, and a wild one takes a very long 72 cycles, but even this is still worth it. When sleet wheat is finally ready to harvest, it makes 18 units of sleet wheat grain in one go. The first relatively new use for sleet wheat grain is in the plant pulverizer to make bracken. 10 sleet wheat grain added to 15 kilograms of water makes 20 kilograms of bracken a useful liquid that I covered in more detail in the Gassy Moo Critter Tutorial Bite, as the moos also make it. Each domestic sleet wheat plant makes on average 2kg per cycle of bracken, or 0.5kg per cycle if wild, which isn't very much. But sleet wheat grain is more useful in cooking. It's not edible in itself, but is a cooking ingredient, so it must be cooked to make dupe food, but it does make very good ones. Its first use is in the electric grill to make frost buns, which have a standard plus two quality. That's already a good start, and is the worst quality food you can make with sleet wheat grain. To make one frost bun requires three sleet wheat grain, so if feeding dupes frost buns, you would need ten wild sleet wheat plants, or two and a half domestic ones per dupe. This is tied with water weeds for the fewest amount of plants needed per dupe for any single plant only food, and has a better quality than raw lettuce. Note that this is only beaten by mushroom wrap, which is the absolute best plant-only food in terms of number of plants required, but needs both water weeds and dust caps. And doing that comes out to a total of about 9.6 plants per dupe. Next up, sleet wheat grain can also be used in the microbe musher with bristleberry to make berry sludge. This has a plus three good quality, and is the best non-dried astronaut food in the Spaced Out DLC because it never spoils. Each recipe needs 5 sleet wheat grain to make 4000 kilocalories of berry sludge, so that's 5 wild sleet wheat plants per dupe, or 1 and a quarter domestic. Now onto the best stuff, and sleet wheat grain is also an ingredient in the gas range, making it the only ingredient to be used in all three cooking stations. It features in three of the absolute top tier foods, which makes it worth farming, these being pepper bread, mixed berry pie, and frost burgers. All three of these give the maximum morale boost, and note that the frost burgers need frost buns and don't use the sleet wheat grain directly like the other two recipes. To cover the numbers again for each dupe, pepper bread made with pincher pepper nut and sleet wheat needs 10 wild or 2.5 domestic sleet wheat plants. Mixed berry pie needs grub fruit, gristle berry and sleet wheat grain at 2.86 wild or 0.71 domestic plants and you need lettuce, barbecue and sleet wheat at two wild or half a domestic plant to make frost buns for one dupe's worth of frost burgers. So that should make it clear why we want to farm these valuable plants, and let's have a look at how to do so. But actually my first recommendation is to start by not farming them, and to simply use the wild plants around the map in the early and mid game phases. Most base game maps, or classic size maps in the spaced out DLC, have large amounts of wild sleet wheat already growing. Before you have the research, base stability and time to actively farm sleet wheat, 
I would highly recommend just digging small tunnels to reach the plants in frozen biomes. These small tunnels help stop the biomes from overheating or melting. Then set the plants to harvestable in the harvest overlay, and dupes can collect the sleet wheat grain. Remember if you're cooking these straight into frost buns, which is very easy to do, you would need 10 of these plants per dupe. And taking this a step on, they are a great plant to intentionally wild farm. You can build large wild farms with natural tiles and use pips to plant the seeds, and I covered exactly how to do this in the wild farming and pip planting tutorial bite. Because this takes quite a bit of time to set up, it is only worth it for the better quality foods, of which sleet wheat is definitely one. Of course the area does need to be kept cold for the plants to grow, so a cooling loop is necessary here. Moving on to domestic sleet wheat, these must be supplied with dirt and kept cold too, but that makes supplying the water fertiliser difficult, a problem that wild sleet wheat farming avoids. As they need water, hydroponic tiles are definitely advisable to pump the water straight in. To meet the temperature requirements of the sleet wheat and the liquid water, there are two options. Firstly, you can keep the area between minus 3 and 5 degrees Celsius, as between these temperatures, both sleet wheat will grow and water won't freeze. If you are doing this, then fine temperature control is needed, using the cold injector, as I covered in the cooling tutorial bite. The other way to keep the plants growing is to cool the area and the plants down, for example to around minus 10 degrees, and use insulated pipes to stop the water freezing. As long as the water keeps moving, then it shouldn't freeze, and you could use a liquid valve to stop water sitting in the pipes, and each plant will use 33.33 grams per second of water, also beware using a liquid in the cooling loop that won't freeze at these temperatures, such as petroleum or ethanol. Using hot water to fertilise the plants is not necessarily an issue, as the temperature of the plant is determined by its body temperature, as seen in the temperature overlay, so as long as the incoming water is well insulated, you can feed the plants fairly hot water without cooling this itself. In terms of sustainability, water is easily obtained from geysers, and dirt can be made renewably in a couple of ways for example with a pip dirt ranch. A hot water geyser, making on average 3 kilograms per second of water, is enough to supply 90 domestic sleet wheat plants. Of course the slush geysers and cool steam vents make half of this, so it can feed 45 plants each. To make the dirt, a single pip dirt ranch can make enough dirt for 32 sleet wheat plants, and for more information on how to do this, see the pip critter tutorial bite. And so that's all for this guide to sleet wheat, in oxygen not included. I hope this helps you make the best foods with these cold but very powerful little plants, and thanks for watching.